Hi, my name is Kate Brooks, and I'm the executive director of the Career Center at Vanderbilt University. And I just want to welcome you all to this presentation. This is a Google presentation, but it's actually more like a webinar than the typical Google Hangout approach. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's helpful to all of you who are listening. When I start talking about majors and careers, I want to talk first about what I call the question. And the question is the question that pretty much every high school or college student gets asked somewhere in their career. What happens is you go home for a holiday and you start talking to your relatives about the fact that you're, th you're majoring in English or you're majoring in history or you're majoring in, in philosophy. And the first thing they ask you is, what are you going to do with that? Well, I hope that in the next few minutes, I can give you some answers to that and give you some ways to deal with that question because it's a very frustrating question because it's really kind of based on a wrong assumption. It's not what's your major and what are you going to do with it? It's what do you want to do? You show through your major that you've developed the skills and the knowledge and the ability to do whatever it is you want to do. So let's drill down a little bit and just talk about this whole major thing, because I suspect it's something that you've been thinking about. This is a chart that I made that's based on uh, a compilation of students that I've worked with over the years at, at several different universities and colleges. And as you can see, this chart shows what they started with in terms of a major and then where they ended up. So we've got an American Studies major who's a volunteer for AmeriCorps, an American History Cultural Civilization major who's a law student, an economics major who's a bank manager, English majors who are technical writers and freelance reporters, government major who's an analyst for the Human Rights Commission, um, philosophy major who's a law student, and a psych major who works in the Humane Society. And she loves that job. She said that she uses her psych major all the time because she matches people to animals. So this is really nice. And it shows you how your major can come in very handy. But you know what? I've played a little game with you here. It's all wrong. This is the real story. So the uh, ancient history, cultural civilization major, well, they're the technical writer. And it was actually an English major who was the Humane Society manager. And she said that she loved matching people to animals and that she, she based it on her knowledge of people from all the literature she had read and all the character studies she had analyzed. The psych major is actually the law student. And it might interest you to know that of all the people on this page, the philosophy major had the highest salary after graduation because he became a software developer. So I hope what this does is kind of free your mind a little bit, that you don't have to feel like you're making a career decision the minute you make a major decision. Now, certainly there are majors that are very career oriented and applicable to careers. If you want to be an electrical engineer, for example, I highly recommend you major in electrical engineering. But you might want to minor in something else. And that minor that you take will add a new dimension to whatever it is that you're planning to do. So approaching your major as purely a career decision is probably not necessarily the best way to go. There's more to it than that. Because when you think about it, your major is it's a body of knowledge, obviously. It's, it's certainly information that you will have. But it's also a mindset. It's how you like to think about things. And the mindset of a psychology major is different from the mindset of an anthropology major, which is different from the mindset of a biology major. So you want to be thinking about, you know, what types of thinking do I like to do? And it also gives you a new perspective. You know, we view things differently based on what we have learned and based on our knowledge. And so this perspective becomes really important. It is a gateway to your future. It certainly is a body of knowledge and this mindset and perspective that you're going to talk to an employer about at some point. Hopefully it's also the source of answers to the various questions you've had. And it's going to help you think that through. Another thing to think about when you think about your major is 
what are the mindsets I'm going to develop? What are the strengths I might get from this major? So for instance, systems thinking or analytic thinking, or maybe it gives you an opportunity to be creative or strategic or develop that positive kind of mindset. Maybe it's a major that will encourage you to think globally and about international issues or collaboratively, and you'll develop lots of teamwork skills. These are all things that employers are looking for. And you can get these things in virtually every major that you would take here at Vanderbilt. You will be able to develop these strengths and these mindsets. One way to start thinking about this is to think across the board because it isn't just the major that you take, but it's something you might minor in, it's the additional coursework that you take, it's the knowledge that you have. So you think of it as almost this lattice work that connects all these different things you're studying and enhances your ability to understand a problem or a situation because you're approaching it from so many different ways. And this is very relevant when it comes to a career. Because the, in the old days, the career model was kind of a ladder. It was an idea that you just moved up the ladder and you progressed from one title to another and you might stay with the same company for many years. But that really doesn't happen much anymore. In fact, some of the recent articles in The Economist and other magazines have indicated that people who are in their 20s, early 20s right now, are likely to have 29 different jobs before they retire. So you're going to be moving around a lot. So you want to think of it instead of a ladder, again, more of this lattice work. How do I connect what I've learned to what I'm doing now? And then I'm out in the world of work and I'm working on this one job and maybe I move up, but I might also lose, move across and I might move myself into a completely different field. There's a lot of different ways to go, and it doesn't have to be that linear. That's why um, your major, while relevant, actually will be applied to a lot of different things. So again, having a major that you have really enjoyed and you've, you've had a good time in the classes and you've done well with your grades and all of that can sometimes be the better way to think about it. So the metaphor that I like to use when I talk about careers is chaos theory. Because chaos theory was actually developed to see if we could do a better job at predicting the weather. And what we learned was, no, it's pretty hard to predict the weather because it's complex. Weather is not a linear thing necessarily because things change. And so that's how your career planning is going to go too. You may be feeling right now like you're very linear. Maybe you're saying, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to work on Wall Street. And that may be what you'll end up doing. And that's great. But I would encourage you to recognize the improv nature of things, the fact that new things might emerge. First of all, it's a complex thing choosing what you want to do. It's not just I majored in this, so I'm going to be that. But it actually might be your interests, the things you enjoy doing, the things that you know you have a lot of talent in. You may be considering factors like how much money you will make. It may be, do I give back? Do I want a career where I make a difference? You know, those are all the things that will, will enter into this decision. So it's not a simple thing. And as I mentioned, things emerge. You know, you may be on a path to do one thing and then you'll take a class and all of a sudden you're going to love that class and you're going to think that professor is the best person you've ever listened to and you're going to want to study everything that professor teaches you. And as a result, you may move in a very different direction. You might also do an internship or a summer job, and, and those experiences might teach you something. You may learn that the career fields you thought you wanted to do, you don't want to do. So it's a good idea to definitely keep an open mind and start connecting the dots. What are the connections between what I've studied and what I want to do in the future? Think back to those mindsets and those strengths that I mentioned and told you that you could get in any major. What strengths am I getting and what career fields would really support those kinds of strengths? Chaos theory tells us to try to stay away from predictions because just like the weather, we can usually do a pretty good job of predicting what it'll be like this afternoon or maybe even tomorrow. 
maybe the next few days. After that, as you know, it gets pretty vague. If you look at a map before a hurricane, you will see they'll have five or six different prediction models just depending on what happens. Well, careers are kind of like that too. You can have some predictions. You can say, I'm planning to go to law school. I'm planning to go to med school. And that's great. And if you move forward with those plans, well, that's wonderful too. But like I said, you might also want to veer in another direction. So staying detached from, from declarative predictions might be a good idea because chaos theory is really big on the butterfly effect. Something that you weren't expecting may come about. And that's what you want to be, be ready for. So how do you approach this whole career process? If there's a little bit of wandering involved and it doesn't sound like you, you necessarily have a plan, although you might, well, the first thing is don't approach it by going on the internet and Googling things like, what are the 10 best careers? Because you're going to get Yahoo or one of those other search engines idea of what they think are the best careers. And the best careers, for you may or may not be what the best careers are for Yahoo. And so quite often, for instance, you'll find that when you do best careers, it defaults to where you make the most money. And that's a good thing. Nobody's gonna argue with making money, but just because a career makes a lot of money does not mean it's the right career for you. And so there are lots of careers where you can make good money and you don't have to limit yourself to what the top 10 lists are. So I would just encourage you not to get too, too focused on that. So what do you do instead if you're not gonna Google the best careers? Well, you wanna think about where are you in this whole cycle? you know, where are you in the process? And so the first step is kind of at the top. And this is where I think most of you will be when you arrive at Vanderbilt. It's discover your strengths. Who am I? What am I enjoying learning? What am I going to major in? What, what do I do well? What have I done so far? And what do I want to keep doing? And then the next phase is once you've kind of figured out yourself is develop your vision. What's out there? Who might hire me? What types of opportunities are available for someone like me? And then once you've getting a handle on that, then you move into design your path. How do I get there? And that's almost like a GPS tracker. You know, you know where you are. You're at Vanderbilt and you know what your strengths are and then you know where you want to go. And what's the what's the route? that will get you there in the most efficient way. And then finally, you do an internship or you're on a summer job or you actually have graduated and you're getting a job. Well, now you're at deliver your talent. Now your focus is a little bit more on how can I be effective where I am? And I should make it clear right now that the Career Center is here to help you every single step of this way. We have various activities and programs that support each one of these aspects so that wherever you are, we're ready to work with you and meet your needs. So let me talk for a second about how to be thinking about this and how to, how to make the most of your first year and, and as you go through Vanderbilt. And really one of the most important things you can have is what Dr. Carol Dweck calls a growth mindset. She has a wonderful book called Mindset. If you haven't read it, you read it, you might enjoy it. Um, it's a learning mindset. And if you think of this little guy here who's learning to walk, if his mother accidentally lets go and he falls down, he's not going to say, well, that's it, never walking again. He's going to get up and he's gonna to try to walk again. And that's what people who have a growth mindset do. They say, how can I learn? And if I fall, how can I get right back up again and try it another way? How can I move forward? And so approaching your classes that way is a great way to go because you'll be thinking about how can I get the most from this class? What can I learn here? What's my opportunity? What could I do with this class? How might what I'm learning help me sometime in the future? That's a growth mindset. There's also that fixed mindset, which is more of a judging mindset. So I picked a picture of a judge that I suspect some of you have seen on television. And I think we could all agree that she kind of makes up her mind about situations. And once she's made up her mind, she's not gonna move. And so 
it's important that you focus more on that growth mindset. And the reason being, if you go into a class and you have this fixed mindset of, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this class. I'm not interested. I think I took this in high school. It wasn't much fun. I don't want to take it again. You're limiting your opportunities to learn. You're shutting yourself off from having this open mind. So I, I strongly encourage that growth mindset as you go through. Another thing to think about is crafting experiments. If you think about what you do throughout the next four years toward your career as just, I'm going to craft an experiment. We all know about experiments. Scientists do them all the time and pretty much they're set up to fail. We know we're going to fail when we do an experiment. We know we're going to wander into something, quickly learn we don't like it. That's okay. Wander back out again. So by wandering in and out of opportunities, you'll get a chance to see what really does work and what doesn't work. How can we help you? Well, let's start with the Commons. That's a picture of Vanessa Beasley, who is the Dean of the Commons, and she's there with some of the Commons students. That's the first year residential experience, and she has all sorts of programs that she, she sets up for students that will give you a chance to develop your intellect, to be part of a community, to focus on your well-being and your self-discovery. Remember that who am I part of things? And your cultural awareness. So by living in the commons right off the bat, you're going to have some experiences. Oh, and by the way, we have two career coaches who are assigned to the commons and they have office hours there several times a week and we run programs at the commons all the time. So you will have a chance to meet our staff and work right there. You won't even have to come to the Career Center if you don't want to. And then in terms of what we have to offer, this is a photo from one of our career fairs. We offer career coaching services that will help you with career exploration. We have all kinds of career search tools, uh, assessment instruments, all sorts of things to help you figure out what you might want to do. We'll help you with research on industries. Our website has a lot of resources that we pay for where you can get valuable information. We'll help you with networking, with social media support, with on-campus recruiting, finding internships in the summer and summer jobs and full-time jobs at graduation and all sorts of specialized programming. We go out to student groups of all types and offer special programming. We have programming for international students. We have programming for LGBTQ students. We have programming for uh, students who are leaders. You know, we have all sorts of specialized programming just depending on what your interest area is or where you might need some assistance. And we have some unique things that are very unique to Vanderbilt. Wandering maps are something I started creating years ago with my students. And it's a really fun exercise we do where you pretty much put your whole life down on a piece of paper and we help you figure it out. We help you make sense of what you've been through before. I've had students say to me, now I understand why I had such a great time at Goldman Sachs at my summer internship program, because it was all about strategic thinking and planning ahead. And I realized when I was five years old, my dad taught me to play chess, and that's all about strategic thinking. And so just being able to make those connections about what you've done in your life and how you're going to carry those gifts into the future can be very helpful. We also have a, a, another fun thing called Possible Lives, where I have students put down all the different careers you've considered in your life, whether that was marine biologist because you once saw Shamu at, the, uh, at SeaWorld, or whether it's I wanted to be a firefighter when I went to kindergarten, we all toured the fire station. But we put down all those possible lives, and then we start looking at Okay, how do I get to that possible life? And what I find is that when you start mapping out the plan to get there, you very quickly realize, uh, maybe I'm not so interested in that, my energy is going away, or conversely, I'm getting really psyched about this. We do SWOT analyses, which is a much more uh, structured and formal way to think about it in terms of what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what are the opportunities that this company offers me, and what are my threats, who might also be going for that same opportunity that I'm going for, and how can I mitigate that? How can I figure out a way to be better at it? We have goal setting strategies that we will work with you on. I like to categorize people as either probable, possible, or intention setting. If you're a probable goal setter, it means you pretty much have a goal. You know what you want to do. You want to work for a particular company, or you know you want to be in a particular industry. And in that case, it's pretty clear, and we will help you set the clear goals. 
Many of you are going to be possible goal setters, meaning you've got some ideas, but you've got three, four, four, five, maybe more ideas that you're thinking about. And they're all over the map. You want to be a golf pro, but maybe you also want to be a market analyst, or maybe you want to be a professor and you can't decide between those. Well, we'll help you do that. And you've got several years here to start trying them out, crafting experiments, see which ones really start to pop for you. And then there's intention seekers. And those are my folks who say, I just really don't know. And sometimes those people stay away from the Career Center because they think we can't help you. It's actually the opposite. We can give you lots of help because intentions, you know, we just start to focus them a little bit. I have literally had students say to me, all I can tell you is I would like to have an interesting job after graduation. And if that's the, the most focused they can be, then we work on that and we start defining interesting and we start looking around for what fits that. Is it interesting to become a teacher? Is it interesting to become a chemist? You know, what is not interesting? Let's eliminate that. So we can help you with all of these aspects of your, of your search. We, as I mentioned, provide connections to employers for internships, summer jobs, and postgraduate. This is just a few of the employers. We have hundreds of employers. In fact, we have thousands who post job opportunities with us. Employers want Vanderbilt graduates. And these are employers from all over. Many are in business, but they're also in things like advertising and public relations and education and nonprofit organizations, social justice careers, all sorts of things. And our we, you know, we have no bias where that is concerned. We want you to pick the career that's right for you. And so we are here to help you with whatever career you're interested in. So that's just kind of a summary of how to start thinking about majors and how to start thinking about what you do. I hope, if nothing else, you're feeling a little less pressure. You're recognizing that this is a process and you have time to think of some of these things. There are certain career fields that you're going to want to get started on earlier rather than later. Things like investment banking or engineering careers because you're going to need to start taking courses or pursuing opportunities in those fields. And if that's where you're leaning, come see us right away and we'll be glad to help you get started. But if you're looking at other career fields, the pressure won't be on quite as heavily and you really do have time to explore. So I want to give credit to the wonderful folks at Flickr Creative Commons who give permission for anyone to use their photos and even use them for commercial use. And so those were some of the photos that you saw in this particular uh, showing. And on that note, I just want to thank you for, for sticking this program out. I really appreciate it. This is a copy of my book. This is the new edition. My old edition is bright red. Now they've moved me over to an aqua color. But my book is called You Majored in What? Designing Your Path from College to Career. And if, it's, if it would be helpful to you, I encourage you to take a look. You can get it at your local library, or if they don't have it, ask them to order it. And I'm also available via my blog, which is Psychology Today, Career Transitions. If you just go into Psychology Today's blog, you will find me. My Twitter feed is at Katherine Brooks. My Pinterest is Dr. Kate Brooks. My Facebook is Katherine Brooks, and apparently a whole lot of numbers. But I think if you type in Katherine Brooks Vanderbilt University, you'll probably find me. So on that note, I'm going to conclude. Since this is a, a recorded session, I can't do questions and answers, but I can tell you that the admissions office will be happy to help you with any questions that you have, and they will be, be happy to provide information about career services or any other questions that you have about coming to Vanderbilt. Thank you so much for participating in this program, and I wish you the best. <laughs>